start, I guess. Uh, if you're in this room, you have a genuine interest in video codecs, or you are too lazy to go see someone else's talk. Um, my name is Seth. Um, you might know me as Harkonnen on the IRC channels uh, or in the Ubuntu community. Uh, I've worked for a couple of networks, and so my background really is in video editing, specifically uh, within Final Cut Pro. Uh, and so during all that kind of stuff, I've gotten really, really familiar with video compression. And the thing about video compression is that there's the classic dramatic battle between the artists and the technologists, I guess. Artists, obviously, if they've gone to all the trouble of making their work look beautiful, at full quality, they don't really want to have to compress at all. In an ideal world for an artist, uh, if you're the content creator, you wouldn't need to compress. you just have all this bandwidth and you can just send it out to your audience, uh, pure. Now obviously that's not the reality, uh, as people in the delivery side of things know that there's just not that kind of, uh, there's not that kind of setup yet. Um, and so what happens is that we have to compress the, uh, the video. Um, and that's where codecs come in. So I'm going to cover uh, what codecs are, why we have them, uh, what we have to do to deal with them, and uh, how to use them for our benefit, and why we should care about them in the uh, open source community. Um, so, does anybody know what Codex stands for without going onto Wikipedia? You claim to know, but I don't believe you, because if you really do, you shout it out. Uh, it's, it depends on who you ask. There's, uh, it's, it's code and decode is the, the interpretation I prefer. There's also some people who refer to it as compression, compression and decompression which to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're not really ever decompressing anything. You're, you're still looking at the compressed video. So, um, code and decode. So that basically means if I had a long message to convey to you guys via maybe a piece of paper, I had to write it down, but all I had available to me was a very small piece of paper. I'd have to adjust my message to fit on that small piece of paper, right? So I'd make some sort of code. Maybe I'd drop out the vowels or I'd drop out every other word or something. And that would make no sense to you whatsoever unless I gave you a decoder ring. And then you could look up what my code was, you could make the adjustments and figure out what I'm really trying to say to you. And that's the idea here. There's a certain amount of things that the video uh, needs to just abandon. There, there's got to be you know, shades of color or uh, exact, uh, the precision of, of every pixel, you know, it's going to have to drop some of that information in order to be, uh, to become small enough to be able to just send out over the internet or even to fit on a DVD, a standard definition DVD. Um, so codecs, I mean, in that respect are actually pretty good and we should, we should appreciate them. Um, and so it kind of sounds cool, right? Because it's, it's like, hey, if we find a good codec, uh, then you know, if it looks good and we can send it out to people, then that's it, right? That's, that's the end of the game. We win, right? Wrong. Because, um, well, why isn't there just one codec, right? Because I mean, if, if we really found a good one, there would just be one codec. We would all be happy with it. It, it gets the job done. Um, but uh, the idea is, and this is where it gets a little bit more, I guess, economic and political, um, that we're not really, it boils down to money, you know? Um, think about it. If I had a really, really important message to send out to everyone, and I put it in code because I didn't have enough uh, paper to, to send it out to each of you, um, if it was really good information, I wonder how much I could charge you to be able to read that message, right? I mean, that would be a great way for me to make a little bit of money out of this talk. One of the designs of the, the industrial uh, codecs are, are to, to extort money out of the, the, the end user. And the reason for that is that we're not, you and I aren't really the audience for these codecs. The, the audience for the development, the, the motivation for the development of codecs are the big companies that are going to, that, that want a method of locking down their media. 
uh, think about like real play, think about flash, you know, think about all these uh, delivery methods that companies are using, and at some point they get to charge someone for the right to decode that information. It's not always us directly, and we'll go over that in a minute, but it does boil down to the company owning a certain code and then restricting who has access to it, which is why we can't pop in a DVD into our computer and easily rip it to our hard drive, put it on our media player, put it on uh, our personal web, uh, media server, and you know, and stream it through our house to whatever screen we want. You know, I mean, it can be done obviously, but I mean, it's not it's not something that you know that you're buying when you buy that DVD, according to the companies. Okay, so who does pay for the uh, code accident? If, that, if the motivation is to charge for the privilege to decode, uh, obviously it's boiling down to money at some point, and, and indirectly we end up paying for it um, outside of open source software. Anytime that we purchase an operating system like Mac OS X or Windows, um, we are part of that price is you know the codecs that they're bundling with that operating system. Which is why if I buy uh, Mac OS X, um, I get to play maybe uh, Flash and MPEG-4 and uh, H.264 really transparently. I don't have to go any. I don't have to do anything to make those work. Uh, but if I throw in a um, an XVID or a DivX or an X264 encoded media, suddenly my computer won't handle it, um, and that Mac that just works. Just, it doesn't just work anymore, you know? It's like, oh, wow, I have to, this isn't compatible with my Mac. Same goes for, for Windows, I guess. Um, and then there's um, editing software, obviously. is uh, You know, we pay, what, 1400 bucks for Final Cut Studio, uh, 300 bucks for the Express version. Um, I haven't checked prices on Premiere lately, but I mean, you know, it's a thousand bucks, 1200 bucks for Premiere. Part of that, that you're buying are the codecs so that you can import the media that you need to edit, uh, do whatever you want to do with it, and export it back out to a format that you can deliver it to people. 